All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend update. Saturday, May 3rd, 2025 is the date. 12.02 p.m. California time, local time here. Uh, latest activity shows, uh, let's see, on the Earthquake 3D globe, a 2.9 into the Java Trench area here in that little green flag. Also some movement into the Gulf of California. Looks like right on the plate boundary for a four-pointer. Just a couple hours ago, I see... Uh, nothing being reported from the USGS in regards to that earthquake. It's probably happening right around here, this little fracture boundary in the Gulf of California. That uh, is being reported there from the EMSC model for that 4.0 earthquake uh, there that happened uh, earlier this morning. So taking a look here at Southern California right off the bat. A couple smaller earthquakes here in the last hour. Those lighten up in the red. The majority of these quakes above 2.5 from yesterday. Uh, so nothing new, no major movement going on here across Southern California for now. Just a couple small microquakes scattered out and about. But with this activity stirring up down there in the Gulf of California, we'll watch maybe for some escalation there of the quakes uh, throughout the day today. Uh, through the Pacific Northwest, relatively the same conditions. Very small earthquakes out there across the Pacific Northwest. Nothing big. And the Intermountain West region's pretty quiet. Yellowstone, nothing showing up there. But uh, let's double check the Yellowstone overviews and uh, see what we have here. Just out of curiosity, got to double check that. Um, as far as earthquake activity goes, I'm really not seeing anything of local seismic events here. Uh, some of this noise, uh, well, these could be very small microquakes locally to this seismograph station, but I'm not seeing anything. Uh, of noteworthy value out here that would uh, even qualify as a quake. Um, those are very small. And as you can see, nothing showing up there on the USGS map. Uh, through the uh, Texas oil field, still getting hit. Nothing new to report out there. Just a lot of earthquake activity. New Madrid seismic zone here. Looks like we had another earthquake after midnight for a 2.4. Uh, just, yeah, about 12.30 in the morning now. This is a secondary earthquake here in the last 24 hours, bringing the uh, total tally up here to about six earthquakes of somewhat decent magnitudes there. Uh, getting up in the upper two range. Of course, got to watch that. Keep an eye on that because, you know, 200 years ago, over 200 years ago, I've seen a series of large earthquakes there well before the estab established population density uh, upper sevens, a couple sevens here that happened back in 1811, 1812. Uh, for the activity down south here, just off the tip of the Argentina area. That uh, pretty good swarm of movement down there. I guess these are all aftershock sequences here, right? Let's see if we got a total tally uh, for these earthquakes. About 39 events. The largest one, a 7.4 earthquake, happened yesterday early early yesterday morning there about six in the morning uh, so far the largest aftershock going to be a 6.4 number of fives in there as well uh, as far as activity here this morning got a number of fours one five in there uh, and i'm sure many many other smaller threes twos and ones but uh, it's the usgs even the emsc may not show the smaller quakes uh, that are happening down there in this area Otherwise, the earthquake, well, looks like they've got some in there, huh? I've seen a couple twos and, and threes happening in there. Uh, but that's yeah, it's a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity there. I'm going to raise this or lower this just a little bit. It was just past the 24-hour threshold there on the globe. But that should be the last 24 hours. So, all right, uh, continue to watch that with a number of earthquakes this morning in the 4 range and one in the 5 range. As uh, far as activity elsewhere... You know, during the events yesterday, we had some activity uh, further up. Well, this is from this morning, 4.4. But we did have a little bit of activity up along the Prucelli Trench during the mix of this and also this earthquake over here um, following the, um, the activity down south here. So I look for little patterns of migration here that we could be looking or maybe expecting to where some larger earthquake activity is happening. And I've still got my eyes here on the Prucelli Trench. There's a number of earthquakes out there that have uh, kicked up there in the area, all up and down the Prucelli Trench. Nothing big, but again, the general plate motion and the stress GPS motion here uh, from these earthquakes that we've seen yesterday point all uh, point to the areas up north here. These arrows 
indicating the general motion of the plate. So when you get earthquake activity there, it normally adds strain in that general fashion that the arrows are pointing to. And in this case, a fracture boundary down here should have added further strain up along the Perchelli Trench, which, which is the uh, uh, western side here of the South American plate. So watch that. It's definitely lighting up out here, but no big earthquake activity yet in that region. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, 4.3 or 4.0, 4.0. There we go. Let's see where that earthquake's at. I wonder if the USGS is reporting it. They are. Afghanistan. Fairly deep earthquake there. 135 miles deep into the uh, eastern area of Afghanistan in the mountains there. Very common to see that type of activity. Elsewhere around the planet. Uh, let's see here. Some larger movement this morning. A pretty big earthquake out there in the Indonesia Islands region. Six pointer. Six point oh to be exact. I struck about oh, about six hours or so ago, my time. Early in the morning, about six in the morning. So six hours ago. Uh, sixty seven miles deep for that quake. Uh, a number of earthquakes following that six pointer. Looks like it's starting to kick kick back up out here in a big fashion. This is a very dynamic area, a part of the crunch zone. And I call it the crunch zone here because if you look at this general area of the uh, Java Trench, Indonesia Islands area, this is pretty much where all the arrows are pointing, right? See all these GPS arrows? Again, that's the general direction of the plate movement. And it all points here, <laughs> almost all of them pointing here to the crunch zone. That includes the Indonesia Islands area, Papua New Guinea, uh, up along the Philippines, Taiwan, all arrows pointing in that region. So it's very common to see earthquake activity of this magnitude on any given day. Even, you know, six pointers, that's probably not every day thing, but uh, these fives and fours bouncing back and forth right now, uh, fairly common. If you look at the last 30 days of activity here, man, we've it's a massive earthquakes, but this is uh, nothing new. We've been having a lot of earthquake activity out here, and that's just very common for this region. You know, what was not common was this activity down south here. Uh, that big earthquake of 7.4 yesterday on the on the fracture boundary. That uh, they haven't really had any type of decent movement down there since 1910. So it's been building. A little bit of strain building up out there. So I'm curious to see where that uh, the result of strain activity will kick up. And I'm still thinking the uh, Perchelli Trench. One earthquake up here along the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. It's a major subduction zone. 4.4 earthquake from yesterday. Nothing new to report there, it looks like. Let me check the earthquake 3D globe. Yeah, pretty quiet out there across this region. Uh, some deeper activity there along the Aleutian Trench and a couple earthquakes up into the Gulf of Alaska. Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, I guess we can double check that here real quick. Kilauea Volcano came to a pause here, I think a couple days ago after erupting just for a short time, just under eight hours there from the north vent. Uh, that was episode 19. So this next one coming up will be episode 20 if things continue the way they've been going. And, well, there's a little something different here. This is just the uh, Kilauea tilt meter up at the summit and the upper east rift zone. This goes up and down uh, in regards to whether it's inflating or deflating right deflating obviously the eruption process and it's been it's been doing that for quite a while this is the past three months here and it's very consistent uh, occasionally we get these longer periods of inflation uh, but this one here is behaving a little bit different got a little bit of a drop but uh, I don't know we'll see how this plays out if things continue the way they're going we should see another eruption here uh, probably <clears throat> maybe by the end of this coming week, uh, next week here. But for now, uh, you know, the Kilauea Volcano is uh, just building up some steam. I, I don't see anything majorly different out there. Live look at the summit area, or this is the uh, Upper East Rift Zone. Let me go back to the summit. Shows continual volcanic gases seeping out of those two vents here, but really nothing new. Uh, it's just pretty crazy how this has been a, uh, a rinse and repeat scenario out here i guess that's better than getting a complete blockage down there and uh, uh maybe having some other type of scenario but uh, yeah we'll continue to watch that as it uh continues to erupt every few days or so 
All right, uh, let's see what we got for space weather activity. Anything major going on in the sun? Well, I, I would like to say yes, but I'd be lying to you, right? I don't want to be lying to you. There is a massive sunspot, right? 4079. Huge. In fact, one of the one of the larger ones I've seen in a very long time, 4079. Right? One would think, well, how come we're not seeing any major solar flares? The answer lies in the magnetic complexity here. Uh, if we're not magnetically complex in terms of the polarities, a lot of different colors surrounded by each other, that would indicate some deep complexity. That's when we get supercharged, so to speak, in terms to produce that massive solar flare or any solar flaring. If you look at the solar flare chart right now, we're uh, getting a little crackly here. I like to, I like to relate that to like uh, a Rice Krispies or something, you know, snap, crackle, pop. There's a little bit of uh, instability going on here with that sunspot so it looks as though maybe things are starting to develop this is from last night uh, a live current image looks like they were getting a little bit of complexity on the south side notice some more orange and yellows a little bit more up top as well and that's what we want when it comes to uh, maybe seeing this thing produce some stronger flares so it looks like right now we're in a little growing stage here. Last night it wasn't looking uh, as complex here, but things are starting to grow on the south side, maybe up north here as well. And um, it's got, oh, I mean, it's almost directly facing the Earth, not quite as far as the Earth-Sun plane. But uh, here in a day, probably tomorrow, this thing should be center disk. And if it continues to grow, we could start to see some solar flares there, Earth-directed with, of course, you know, things being geo effective if any massive CMEs were to blast off so we'll watch that um, it's a bright feature on the UV image uh, it looks like it's starting to you know kick up a little bit of flaring so that complexity has grown overnight uh, overall flare threat 35 percent chance with this growing like that I think it should be around 45 to 50 uh, just because of the, the way things have progressed overnight last night it did not look like it uh, X flare activity 5%. If it continues to grow as it's doing, then that uh, is probably a decent number. Uh, but that's about the only sunspot right now that's noteworthy there on the visible disk of the sun. Far as the far side watch goes, they actually got it working. Awesome. There's our visible sunspot there. This is the Earth facing side of the sun. Here is the eastern limb of the sun western limb back over here sunspots traveling in this general fashion and then they um, come back around the bend looking at the far side there's one area down here that we'll probably get a peek at um, this is a day old so maybe here within by tonight we should see maybe uh, something coming around here not massive but uh, it looks like some type of sunspot also another one almost center disc on the far side of the sun I'll watch for that there in a few days once it uh, makes its way over here if it remains active but right now I think we got to watch this one uh, you know I'm definitely happy to say that it's getting a little bit more complex overnight and that could mean some solar flares here in the near term uh, far as any close approach asteroids out there let's go ahead and check this out real quick see if there's anything of a noteworthy value there's definitely always some big ones. We're always surrounded by big asteroids out there, even little ones and newly discovered ones. But uh, so far, fairly safe in terms of uh, any impacts here on the planet. Closest one here looks to be a 845,077 foot airplane size asteroid, newly discovered. Uh, passing here, it looks like in a few days, in a couple days, there May 6th. But even then, that is a long ways away. Um, considerable distance well outside the earth moon uh, area storm prediction center for severe weather got a weird pattern going on out here it's only supposed to be 73 degrees here in northern california that's quite odd and rare uh, there's a low cutoff low pressure system here that uh, branched off the jet stream bring in some thunderstorm threat out here across the great basin area of nevada four corners area these guys need some rain so that's good for them uh, a little break in the severe weather across the southern plains, and boy, do they need it. Uh, I got to experience it last week, you know, just all the rain, all the severe weather, lots of flooding out there on Oklahoma and Texas area. These guys, 
you know they could use a couple weeks to dry out but it's not this is not going to stay like that for long this pattern is going to flip and bring the severe weather threats back to the southern plains but enjoy the time for now a slight risk for some severe weather across the extreme east that includes a tornado threat there in the two percent zones on the map uh, wind and uh, maybe a little bit of hail threats out there as well. Far severe potential across the Great Basin area. Looks to be maybe some damaging wind gusts from some of these storms that are popping up there uh, throughout the afternoon today. Um, here's a slight risk category. It looks like on day three, severe weather returning out there across Texas. Although this area of Texas, I think down here could use some rain. Um, it's green out there. Beautiful. I love it when, when the spring is green. Uh, and I think it's good for the farmers out there, too. They need th the rain. Maybe not as much as, as they've got, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You have to have to accept it or really not much we could do about it. Uh, let's see what the drought conditions look like out here. Drought monitoring map from the Windy Map. See ya. Down here across the Four Corners, Great Basin area. These guys are still somewhat in a drought. Uh, Oklahoma, this area of Texas where all the rain's been going on. Yeah, not much. It's super wet out there. Look at the moisture anomaly map. Well above the normals out here uh, for this time of year. Lots of lots of uh, wet soil moisture. Across extreme western Texas, not so much. So hopefully uh, a little bit of rain will return to that area. Notice the drought intensity kicking back up here around my neck of the woods. Oregon getting included in that as well. Unfortunately, uh, that will get worse throughout the summer because we, this isn't our rainy season. Our wet season has ended. Uh, we don't normally get any rain in May or June or July. That's all out here across the Plains states in the east. And monsoonal moisture there in the summertime for the Four Corners. But yeah, so fire danger is increasing out there across California. Right now it's still green up across the Sierra Nevada mountains, but... When things dry out, there's going to be a lot of fuel up there to burn, unfortunately. So, got to watch for that uh, this summer. Hopefully nothing takes off, but more than likely it's going to be a, a bad fire season again. All right, uh, seismograph stations there look pretty quiet. Nothing going on across the board uh, for now. We'll just keep an eye on things here today. Enjoy your Saturday. I'm going to go outside and get my my um, my yard cut it, and my field, too. It, it grew like a foot. So I got to get out there and get some yard work done. Like I said, I've been gone all week with Missy Mimi's out here chasing that severe weather out in the Southern Plains and got to see a lot. And uh, it was definitely a, definitely a fun trip. A little stressful, you know, it's kind of hard being out there on the road for a week. Uh, but I did get a good night's sleep last night. And there's, like I said last night, there's no place like home. There's no place like your own pillow on your own bed with my own fan <clears throat> and that's it i sleep sleep like a baby here all right have a good one we'll see you guys back out here uh for the saturday night update unless something major happens enjoy your weekend